Live from your news leader, this is WTAJ News at 6. Tonight at 6, a member of the local school board is arrested for drugs and having unregistered and stolen firearms. We're going to show reaction from police and the school district. The first Penn State University and the Nittany Lions football team is facing yet another lawsuit, this time with various players facing accusation of hazing a teammate. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm John Clay. And I'm Amanda Kenny. The former Penn State football player says a number of his teammates who are still playing at the university today hazed and harassed him in 2018. Now, in this 46-page lawsuit, the player says the university and head coach James Franklin knew about the alleged assault. Our Evan Hinckley standing by with more on this case. But first, we're going to send things over to our sports director, Peter Terpstra, for more on the player behind the accusations. Peter? Hey, John. Hey, Amanda. Uh, as you guys said, before we get to the nuts and bolts of this thing, we're going to give you a little background on 20-year-old Isaiah Humphreys, who is suing Penn State coach James Franklin and one of his former teammates uh, for hazing allegations. Like I said, he's 20 years old, and he no longer plays football at Penn State. He has since transferred. Isaiah Humphreys is from Texas originally and only spent one season at Penn State, which is the 2018 season. Now, according to the lawsuit, Humphreys says he and his dad, a former Penn State and NFL player reported the hazing and then after that in reality in retaliation for making the report Franklin and the staff made him do drills designed for him to fail to justify not giving him game time. The lawsuit also says his teammate conspired to encourage him to transfer and he did to Cal Berkeley where at last check he is currently on the roster. Now he sat out this past season because of NCAA transfer rules and he has yet to play a snap of college football. Now we've been working on this story all day. We're going to bring in our guy Evan Hinckley. Uh, Evan, uh, some serious accusations going on here. What do you got for us? Serious indeed, Pete. Uh, within this lawsuit, quite a number of sexual allegations of a serious nature made specifically. And Humphreys claims that he's not the only one who uh, had sexual uh, allegations made against him. There's also many other underclassmen who go unnamed in the lawsuit, but who claim, uh, from Humphreys' claims, also experienced the same amount of hazing. A lawsuit filed Monday by 20-year-old Isaiah Humphreys through the office of Philadelphia lawyer Stephen Marino says beginning in January of 2018, current players Damian Barber, Micah Parsons, Jesse Lucetta, and NFL hopeful Etor Grossmatos orchestrated a campaign to harass and haze lower classmen as a form of initiation into Penn State football. Humphreys says the group made threats, including they would, quote, make underclassmen their expletive because this is a prison and said, quote, I am going to expletive you. Humphreys also claims they would say to underclassmen, quote, I am going to Sandusky you, and quote, this is Jerry. It wasn't just verbal. Humphreys says the underclassmen would wrestle players to the ground, pretend to sexually assault them, and put their genitals on the underclassmen's faces while they were held down. Some of the other sexual conduct is too graphic to broadcast. All of this, the suit claims, happened in the Lash Building along with a campus dorm and other places in the county. The suit says coaches observed the harassment in the locker room and that Humphreys reported it to them. The civil complaint goes on to say that Humphreys' father, Leonard, a former PSU and NFL player, reported the hazing directly to James Franklin and other football leadership, but that no substantial action was taken. In May of 2019, PSU's Office of Sexual Misconduct received an anonymous complaint of this harassment and hazing. That office investigated, but Humphreys says the football team concealed the hazing during the investigation. The suit says Penn State submitted its findings to PSU student conduct, which determined Barber violated student code of conduct and charged him with assault and hazing. Now, in response to this suit, Penn State told us, quote, Penn State Police investigated related allegations and forwarded the results of that investigation to the office of the Center County District Attorney. The DA reviewed the case and decided that no charges would be pursued. And this civil lawsuit specifically does not list uh, exactly how much money uh, Humphreys is seeking, but it is he is seeking a jury trial. One final note about the suit. In it, Humphreys claims that Penn State linebacker Jesse Lucetta threatened to, quote, gun down uh, Humphreys if he, Humphreys was ever seen in Lucetta's hometown. But once again, the Center County DA feeling that there's no evidence in this case 
to press charges. Reporting live here in University Park, Evan Hinckley, WTAJ News. Thank you, Evan. For more on this lawsuit, head over to our website, wearecentralpa.com. A member of the Bellwood Antis School District's Board of Directors was arrested over the weekend after what police say was a simple traffic stop. WTAJ's Darby Sparks is live traffic in Altoona where the man stop. was stopped. Darby? Yes, Amanda. Well, police say that a, 30, a, a woman driving 33-year-old Jason Lynn's car was pulled over on this road behind me for a tail light being out. And the woman told police that there were guns as well as an illegal shotgun in the trunk that was in a safe. Police say that they ended up, what they ended up finding was drug paraphernalia and ingredients to make meth. After getting a warrant, officers pulled Lynn over on Sunday evening. Police say Lynn had cocaine, meth, and more weapons on him. When a tactical team searched Lynn's Bellwood home, they found additional drugs along with a stolen handgun and four unregistered long guns. The Altoona Police Department say that they were already investigating Lynn for potential drug dealing. Our narcotics sergeant had the information that he was um, conducting drug sales out of his house with uh, methamphetamine and cocaine. There was a search done in his residence which corroborated that information. This morning, the Bellwood Antis School District gave a written response saying, in part, Jason Lynn's alleged actions do not reflect the values of our community, district, or our school board of directors. We have been in contact with our solicitor and are working through this issue. Now, the school district says that Lynn will remain on the board until he is proven guilty. Live in Altoona, I'm Darby Sparks, WTAJ News. Thanks, Darby. We have an update on the case surrounding the viral video that shows two teens beating a deer. 18-year-old Alexander Smith's preliminary hearing was on Friday. Smith waived that hearing, so the case heads to the Court of Common Pleas. Jury selection is set for May 11th. According to the criminal complaint, Smith and a 17-year-old male admitted to everything in the video. Both faced two felony counts of aggravated animal cruelty and two felony counts of conspiracy to commit animal cruelty. From WTAJ, your weather authority, here's your weather now. Well, let's start off by taking a look at our lows from this morning. Well above average. Average low for this time of the year, 20 degrees for most of us. A lot of us were upper 20s, lower 30s, 32 in Altoona, Huntington 31, St. Mary's 30 this morning, Indiana at 30 for this morning. So cold air is already in place. Our winds for this morning were coming out of the east, so the cold air already in place in the valleys. We have cool, moist air from the Atlantic being brought over to us here in central PA. That's going to trap that cold air we saw this morning into the valleys east of I-99. But with this easterly wind, that normally gives our western counties a bit of a bump in our temperatures, and that's what we saw today. Here's Tuesday today at 2.45, so earlier this afternoon. The wind still coming out of the south and southeast, a very cool flow for us, still trapping that cooler air in our valleys. While our western counties in the western part of PA, look where the wind's coming from, out of the west and southwest, and uh, that brought you guys a warmer afternoon. We do see the winds now becoming a bit more westerly, and that will give us a warmer day for tomorrow. But cold air damming, that is what we saw for today, that cold air already in place from this morning, plus the winds coming from the east, cold air being more dense, heavier, settles in the valleys, has a very hard time getting over the mountains, and that keeps us here east of I-99 in our eastern counties much cooler compared to those out towards the west, especially when you guys saw the winds coming from the southwest, and that ushered in so much warmer air for this uh, afternoon. We can still see that right now. Upper 30s, lower 40s for our eastern counties. Still upper 40s right now. 48 for Indiana, Johnstown 48, Pittsburgh 48 degrees. So for tomorrow, a warmer day, a bit of sunshine in the morning, but we'll end the day tomorrow with a little bit of rain. I'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Mike. Well, temperatures in parts of our area last weekend broke the record highs for this month. The warm weather is certainly taking a toll on ski resorts so far this season. Our Colleen Knutson spoke to folks at Blue Knob All Seasons Resort about how the weather is impacting their ability to stay open. Colleen? John, Amanda, it's been nearly six weeks since Blue Knob opened up for their winter season. They say making and maintaining their snow has been a struggle. 
fog overwhelmed Blue Knob Resort on Tuesday. Yet another day the resort had to close because they can't make any snow. We've been open way more than we've been closed, but you know, when you can't replenish the snowpack, that's where your problems come in and we're just waiting for some colder weather. Heim says it needs to be 28 degrees or lower to turn on the snow machines. Without new snow, all of the trails begin to melt which can be a safety concern for visitors. You don't want to put people out on the slopes when there's limitations like that. Um, not only that, it's hard on their equipment as well. So, but we will not put people through that when it's unsafe. For the disappointed season pass holders, the resort hopes they understand it's just part of the sport. People that ski and snowboard, as I said, know that it's weather dependent. Although the resort has been closed for days at a time, Heim says they aren't concerned about any major loss of revenue, adding it's just the start of their season, which can run through April. We can't really judge the whole season on what's happening now. Himes is hopeful that on Thursday they'll be able to turn on those snow machines and reopen for this weekend. In Blair County, I'm Colleen Knudsen, WTAJ News. Thank you, Colleen. Well, Interstate I-80 is back open in Jefferson County after a crash this morning. I-80 westbound was shut down for several hours between Brockway and Hazen. PennDOT reports a tractor trailer crashed and fuel spilled on the road. Around 9.30 in the morning, a detour was in place as crews cleaned up the scene. Again, that road has since reopened. Two Clearfield County municipalities are considering consolidation. Last week, we told you that Sandy Township approved a consolidation study. Dubois City Council unanimously agreed to the study at their meeting last night. Now that this study has been approved, the city and township will meet with the state to discuss funding. The study would determine if it's possible for Dubois and Sandy Townships to combine their resources and form a single unified government. Still ahead on WTAJ News at 6, two new Clearfield County officials ready to start their jobs. Find out what plans they have to hopefully make a difference. And some rain showers will move in for tomorrow evening, but when can we see a bit of snow? I'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes.